This is a short video demonstration of the Nige machine. The Nige machine is a complete computer system built inside an FPGA and hosted on an FPGA development board. The board in question is this one, which is a Digilent Nexus 2. Um, on board the uh, Nexus 2 development board we have a Xilinx FPGA here. We have some Micron PSD RAM here, about 16 megabytes. Um, and a lot of I.O. connectors. So we have here a VGA connector, RS-232, USB, PS2 for a keyboard, a series of switches and displays for basic input-output, um, a high-speed expansion connector here, and some low-speed expansion connectors here. Um, this particular connector has been connected to a third-party um, SD card reader-writer to provide essentially a, uh, a disk drive facility. Um, the the Nige machine itself is, is a, is a soft-core um, computer processor and associated um, hardware components that have all been created in VHDL um, and are downloaded onto this FPGA here. So we just come up and look at the VDU here. What we can see, it's a standard VGA display, um, 640 by 480 in this case, 80 characters by 60 characters. Um, the system software by default on the Nige machine is 4th. 4th um, is a, a quite suitable computer language for a small computer. Um, the Nige machine 4th is actually implemented in no more than about 8K, so it, it's, 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 fa it's fairly space effective. Um, if I type words, this is the um, pretty much the ANSI set of 4th words with some extensions for the Nige machine. Um, and basically it, it's a native 4th environment from power on. Talking a bit more about some of the other hardware elements, uh, the VGA display itself is color. So if I do a color table here, you can see we have 255 colors available. Currently they're all against a um, black background. Um, like most of the other hardware components, the, the, video, the video display component is controlled by hardware registers set up within the Nige machine framework. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write 128, which 128 you can see um, is actually a, a blue color. It's this color here. I'm going to write 128 into the register which controls background color. And it's a byte register, so I'm going to do a cstore command for that. You can see we've, we've, we've set the screen blue. Now I'm going to change uh, some of the foreground colors as well. Um, this is going to be done with well, one of the uh, native uh, words on the fourth machine, on the Nige machine rather. Bcol is simply the background color for text. And if I just do this right now, clear the screen. And you can see we're now the computer's now outputting in white and we're inputting in yellow. Um, it's all it's all quite flexible. Um, it has other color modes. For example, it has direct pixel display, 680 by sorry, 640 by 480. Um, it has the ability to change the background of individ individual um, characters on screen as well. Um, the character set is fairly flexible. Um, if, for example, I'll make a little comment here and type in some of the characters we have. I, we, you, you can see we have the symbols for the planets here. Um, we also have Greek characters, some scientific symbols, etc. Um, they're all available. Um, error, error. Clearly that's not, that's not a fourth word just typed in. Um, let's build a short, short fourth program. Clear the screen again. Um, we'll make a short program to show the Fibonacci sequence. So Fib will be the name of our program. Uh, first line, let's set up. Um, this will prepare our loop. This line here will actually maintain two numbers on stack and we'll continue to add them in sequence to produce the Fibonacci sequence. This line here will output them one by one on a separate line. Finish the loop. Tidy up the stack. Finish the definition of the word fib. That's programmed in now. That's been compiled. And let's check the first 10 Fibonacci numbers, and there they are. So quite a flexible 
system. The idea of the Nige machine, it's, it's meant to be a kind of super microcomputer. The microcomputers from the early 1980s and 1990s were really effective in the sense the programmer didn't have to work through layers of software libraries, compilers, etc. in order to actually do things on the machine. They were often programmed in BASIC, some were in fourth, other, other, other languages. This one's in fourth, it's a very effective and compact language, it's only about 8K um, for the entire fourth implementation and it's very fast, it's almost as fast as an assembler as well. Um, but at the same time as getting all the flexibility of an early microcomputer, we get the power of modern hardware. So this one runs on, a, on a, what's a, a, fairly, a fairly standard and not, not by any means the most up-to-date FPGA board, um, but it runs at 50 megahertz. Um, and it's a 32-bit processor, uh, stack-based processor. Um, the soft core is entirely original to the Nige machine. So it gives a fair bit of computing power, but with the simplicity um, of, of the computers of, of yesteryear. Um, I, I mentioned we had a, an SD card port. We can use that for reading and writing applications uh, from disk. So we already have a program dsam.f. Um, on that disk. It's now in memory. Um, and what's that, what that does, it gives us the ability, I just, it's, just, it's, it's one application that I happen to have programmed. Um, we can disassemble some words. So C is a disassembler. Um, I'm going to disassemble the word digit, which is something which converts a, a text character into a numeric digit. Um, it doesn't matter too much. And what you can see here, we've got a disassembly. Um, on the left-hand side, we have um, essentially the memory addresses down here. Uh, we then have the bytes in memory, and then it's interpreted. So you can see the, the, the basic machine language of the Nige machine CPU is here. And the assembler mnemonics are very like forth itself. So it's a stack-based machine. This has moved something from the parameter to the uh, uh, return register. We, we want to load a word size a literal value here. We want a JSR, so it's going to jump to that memory address. This is a duplicate the top item on stack, um, load a byte size literal value, in this case 65, subtract 1, do a greater than test, branch of equal 10 spaces ahead, so 691 will take us down to here. So you can see it's got a, it's got a fairly flexible, there are actually more than 64 um, uh, machine, machine language opcodes. All encoding is, for most instructions, uh, byte size, so it's very compact, and also it has a three-stage pipeline and most instructions execute in one cycle, um, so it's fairly fast as well. The idea, what's the purpose of the Nige machine? The Nige machine essentially brings together the ability to write custom software very quickly and easily without going through a lot of layers, etc., in, in a microcomputer style. But with the ability, and I mentioned some of the expansion ports on the Nige machine, to actually develop and add on um, custom hardware and to program interfaces to custom hardware in VHDL. So it's kind of a melting pot for doing electronic interface development, electronic circuit development um, with a digital component in VHDL, with an analog component uh, perhaps plugged into some of these modules here, and also writing software at the same time. So it, it's, it's, it's meant to be a little bit of a platform for sort of some sort of scientific, um, physical scientific applications. Um, it also provides um, the opportunity to program uh, in the native fourth environment um, and to program as if one were working on a microcomputer um, but with much more modern and fast hardware. Um, this isn't the most up-to-date board. It's a good board. Um, it's, it's a fairly cost-effective board. There are other more advanced boards to which the Nige machine will be ported which will provide an even faster memory, uh, even faster operating environment, more memory, etc. Um, and that's going to be the next phase of the project. Thanks very much for taking a look.